Cincinnati, Princeton at 11 and 2, and of course the undefeated Raiders of Warren Harding coming in at a perfect 13 and 0. Hi everybody, I'm Denny Schreiner along with uh, Reggie Rucker and. Uh, well, Coach, does this bring back memories of that uh, illustrious high school football career that you had in the D.C. area? Well, it certainly does, Denny. You know, Thanksgiving always brings back memories of high school championships all across this great country of ours. And, of course, in Ohio, it's no different. And I think what I remember most is that you're going to play in a big-time stadium in front of a packed house for bragging rights, the championship, and also for some of these kids, an opportunity to go on and continue their education because in a game like this today, you've got scouts from all the major colleges and they're looking at this young talent on the field today. And let's take a look at how these two ball clubs actually got here to the Akron Rubber Bowl to play for the Division I championship. Cincinnati Princeton, well, they started with uh, a, a victory over Huber Heights Wayne, 62 to 30, so there was no problem there. Then Middletown, 35 to 13, picked with 34 to 7, so Cincinnati Princeton's been sailing all the way through the playoffs. Pat Mancusa, their head coach, said they're playing as well as they ever have all season long. Then for Warren Harding, it was a victory over Boardman, 23 to 7. Then Austin Town Fitch, 31 to 6. And then to get here this afternoon, a big victory over Sandusky, 27 to 14 was the final in that one. Let's talk football now and philosophies, Reggie. Two completely different teams offensively. Cincinnati Princeton loves to run the option. Pat Mancuso has been their head coach for 31 years and they've been running the football all 31. To give you an idea of what we're seeing here, just think of those great games that used to take place between the Miami Hurricanes of Florida and of course in Oklahoma. You had the wishbone versus the passing attack. If you get ahead with the wishbone, it's a difficult offense to beat. If you get behind with the wishbone, it's a, it's a difficult offense to use to catch up. So you've got a pass offense here in Warring that I think is going to uh, give Princeton a lot of trouble. Let's talk about Warren Harding. Chris Ensign is their senior quarterback. They have three very talented receivers. So Warren Harding is going to try and spread the field and make Cincinnati Princeton defend. When you're a pass offense, conditions have to be right now it's a chilly day and the wind is blowing a little bit we'll have to wait and see how that affects the passing game but i like the concept here of course <laughs> <laughs> the passing they've, game. yes they've got three wide receivers in this offense they get the football to these people they're excellent athletes and i think they have the ability to put a lot of points on the board well speaking of points both teams averaging better than 27 points per game so it should be an outstanding contest we'll be back with the starting lineups and of course the opening kickoffs right after we pause for this local break And, of course, the opening kickoff comes up next on Sports Channel, the Division I championship game between... Hot rod, spin, move, oh! Princeton. Princeton wins the toss, and they'll take the football, Reggie. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think it's going to be quite an exciting game. As I said, I think it brings up that classic matchup between a team that is excellent at running the football and then the other team who can throw the football. Which one gets ahead on top? We're going to see right now. Ensign boots it deep, and Fred Brown grabs it inside the 10-yard line. Nice little wedge set up. Picks a couple of holes and is finally stopped at about the 26-yard line. Excellent field position to get started. And you're going to see that triple option play. And let's take a look now at uh, the offense for Cincinnati Princeton. Houston is the quarterback, Olverson. He is the big time running back, only a junior. Then Gatewood on the other side. So I guess, Reggie, you could say it's the James boys back there <laughs> yeah. in the backfield and an outstanding offensive line as well. Yeah, particularly Blackwell, outstanding player. A lot of times you'll see two tight ends out of Cincinnati Princeton opening offensive series for a team that has been to the championship finals three of the last four years. Olverson off right tackle picks up a quick five yards Reggie he nearly broke that one. Well, when you play against the triple option the first thing you have to do as a defense is pick up the ball carry. As we take a look now at the defensive interior lineman for Warren Harding. And uh, the linebackers, they're an active crew, and uh, they will be here this afternoon with a running game of Cincinnati-Princeton. And, of course, uh, in the secondary, it's Ensign, the quarterback on offense, Dean, and also Tom Powell. Brings up second down and four, or what every coach would like to see on offense. And this time off the left side. 
it's James Gatewood. So quickly, Pat Mancuso has said, we'll run right or run left. Well, I think, uh, you, you know, Warren is going to have to get a look at some of these plays before they can actually begin to zero in and shut down some of them. When you first look at the triple option, <laughs> it's, it's tough enough trying to figure out which way they're going, but you've got to find out who actually has the ball. It's interesting you say that because Harding's head coach, Phil Anarella, said, you know, we've had a very difficult time this week in simulating the kind of speed that Princeton has in their backfield. Well, you know, practice against this thing, it's, it's difficult. So it's first down and 10 now for Cincinnati Princeton. And this time the quarterback keeps it. That's Lamont Houston. And a short gain, maybe a couple of yards. Well, Houston's one of those special kinds of athletes, Denny, that uh, you must have if you're going to run the wishbone offense. He's got to be very slick in handling the football, and he also has to be a tough guy because he's going to get hit a lot. And I think Houston is excellently suited for that position. And he's only a junior, as is James Olverson, the leading rusher for Cincinnati Princeton. They don't throw the football much. <laughs> no, why should they? They speed up six, seven yards of crack. But I'll tell you what, Houston is an outstanding running back. So all of a sudden, though, Warren Harding's defense starts to shore up a little bit, Reggie, and now it's going to bring up third down and long. Well, I don't think there's any question when you're playing against the wishbone. It's the perimeter that is difficult to defend. You've got to have people that are quick enough to get over there, and then you've got to have the kind of coordination as you see the replay here. Pretty good defense right there. Harding is stacked up right inside. They've got some big people inside, so it's a little bit more difficult up in there. Now it's a big third down play for Princeton, something you don't see very often. A pass, that one's over the middle, and it was intended for Curtis Chenault, the tight end. He's the leading receiver for Princeton, but Harding's defense holds. They'll get the football back. Well, I have to believe that that ball was tipped at the line because there was, that ball was thrown. There wasn't a, a Princeton player in the area at all. Omar Provitt back deep for Warren Harding, the undefeated Vikings. Raiders, I should say, coming into this one, 13 and 0. Playlock back to punt. And Probit wisely lets this one go. And so Harding will start first down and 10 if the wind never stops blowing at about their 14-yard line. And we'll take a look at the Harding offense. And those are the skill people inside an excellent senior quarterback. Howard Probert and Richardson, they can do it. They catch a lot of football between the three of them. And players that have uh, big game ability will take the football 10 yards from the line of scrimmage and make it go. Those two tackles, Stringer and Daniels, they are outstanding. So the first offensive series now for Warren Harding starts now making about the 15-yard line. Inside with a quarterback draw. Tries to get to the outside and is finally pulled down at about the 21 yard line. Brian Keaton had a hold of him for a moment, but Ensign showed a little running ability. Ensign is 5'10, 171 pounds, but extremely strong. Along the defensive interior line, Corey Glass, one of the better ones there. Dean Allen is the nose guard. Weighs only 175 pounds, but he's probably the quickest player on the team. And you see Whitehead, Jamie Phillips, the defensive player on the field today to watch. And then it's Hutchins, Keaton, Young, and Wolfork in the backfield. Second down and three. Look back this time. Powell is in motion. Inside looks, and he's got Powell wide open at the 35, and he's finally dropped it about the 38 yard line. So it's reception number 32 on the season for Tom Powell. Powell averaging about 22 yards a catch. Watch the release here by Ensign. Very good release. Tight spiral. Ball gets there in a hurry. Powell sure of the catch. And I'll tell you, he is the kick runner when, when uh, on all the kicks and so forth. So you know he has running ability in the open field. And as you take a look at some outstanding numbers posted this year by Warren Harding, they are a team that will spread you out and make you guard the perimeter. Good pass, Probit now pulls out the 49-yard line. So Ensign Reggie doing a nice job of quickly getting his three wide receivers into this football game. They call it the TKO because Tom, Kendall, and Omar, those are the first names of the three players who catch all the football for Warren Harding, and they do a marvelous job, great concept on offense, and extremely difficult for high school players to defend an attack like this. 
Almost like watching the Cincinnati Bengals come out and go to that no huddle offense, Reggie. First down and 10. A running play. And breaking into the open and streaking down the sidelines is Anthony Butler, the junior tailback. And if that's not enough, TKO, then they bring Anthony Butler, who's 165 pounds, scat back, screaming through one of those holes because you're so concerned about the pass, and you go to sleep on this. Now watch Butler, good cut here, 165 pounds, stiff arms, one runner right there. Excellent run by Anthony Butler. They will attack you in so many ways. A team averaging better than 27 points per game. Now we've got our first flag here in the opening quarter that was tossed before the ball was snapped. And uh, it looks as if it's uh, either delay of game that's being called against Warren Hardy. Looks obvious that Theo Anarella has put together some kind of collection of athletes here, but I don't think you're able to execute and implement this kind of offense as effectively as these guys are unless you have a special guy playing quarterback. I think Chris Ensign is the perfect complement to everybody in that offensive unit. Well, I talked to Coach Anarello. I said, is he a Division I player legit? And he said he probably would be if he had more size and a yeah. stronger arm. Mm -hmm. He said he'll end up going somewhere and playing college football, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Three-step drop, looks left. Now he's chased out of the pocket. Across the body, makes the throw, and it's another completion inside the 35-yard line. Tough to do right here. Run left and then throw back to the right. We call this elusiveness, escapability. Ensign has the ability to get away from people, and he throws that ball back across his body. Nice play. Brings up a second down play now after the penalty. Opening series for Warren Harding, and they have looked impressive on offense. We have no score in this one in the opening quarter. But that may change with this play. Oh, my. Butler simply bolting right through the center of that Princeton defense. Well, that's because, for one, Warren Harding has those gigantic tackles. And they throw the football so much that they have the defense sitting back thinking pass so that when Butler comes screaming up through those huge holes, and he, he, he encounters no one until he's deep into the secondary. And there's a personal foul call now against Cincinnati Princeton's defense. So a play that ended at the 15-yard line now moves inside the 10, Reggie. And Warren Harding starts first down and 10, first down and goal to go from about the 7-yard line. Extremely explosive attack. I've always believed that you set up the running game with the pass oh, anyway. So. Come on. Well, any old wide receiver is going to say that. <laughs> I was telling him that 20 years ago, didn't he? <laughs> well, throw it first. Throw it first. You were a man ahead of your time. Butler off left tackle. Now the going, I suspect, will get a little rough in there as he is pounded down at the five-yard line. Oh, well, don't forget now, when you've got three wide receivers out there, you're lacking one more big person. So when you get down inside the 10, you need to take out one of those wide receivers, bring in another big body so that you can move those people up front. So what you're saying is you let the receivers take it all the way down the field, but when you get inside the 10, then you got to go back to the running game. Well, because the defense, conversely, brings in a lot of big people. And they put seven, eight guys across the front of that line, and now 165 pounders are going to be able to block a big man. Second down, and to the goal line, and stops at about the one-yard line as Myron Elzey, a six-foot-five-inch, 250-pound senior fullback. Now that's really bringing a load. Watch Elzey, number 43. You can see how tall he is, but the reason why they're having to have a real go at it to get him down is because, as Denny told you, he's 250 pounds, and. He's going to do one of two things this time, Denny. He is going to be the lead blocker, and the back is going to follow him. And I would say right now the other option would be that he would get the football again, but he will definitely be, be the lead blocker on this play. Now, after the penalty, actually, the situation presents itself. Instead of third and goal, it will now be first and goal, at least according to the yard markers. They've got the yard marker placed at about the one and a half. I think that's what the officials are talking about right at this point. Well, if you're Anthony Butler and got the football on the one yard line one thing you want to think about is I want to stay as close to the hip of LZ as I possibly can so that they can't find me all right it will be first down now and goal to go from inside the two yard line so 
The Raiders now just kind of knocking on the door, and they're going to have four pops to get this thing in. Anthony Butler at 5'9", 165. Myron Elsey at 6'5", 250. Look at the two of them there. Look at the contrast in the two backs. <laughs> I know one thing. If Elsey's running in front of you, there's no way you're even going to be able to see Butler. And now you see the first down signal. This is the ninth play of a drive that started all the way back on the 15-yard line, Reggie. It's been an impressive opening quarter for Warren Harding. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Princeton has to find a way to get in there and either get some pressure on inside or cover these receivers closer. Well, a three-back offense over the top. Did he break the plane? It was... Elsie, the big fullback who got to the goal line, but he was turned away. Pretty nice leap by Elsie. Watch how far he takes off here about the three yard line. No, he didn't get in. They stopped him. And so very little gain on that play. Maybe a half a yard. It's second down now and about the length of a football. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Benson take this in on the quarterback sneak. One more time to the big fullback, and his ninth touchdown of the season puts Harding on top in the Division I game. At 6'5", and with that leaping ability, Elsey is able to just to clear the stack, of course, puts Warren Harding on the board first. Here's another look at it. Watch the big fella leap. Good leap. Good push by the offensive line. Harding draws first blood. Myron Elsey. Touchdown number nine. So obviously when they get inside the five, they go to the big fella. Exclusively. Ensign now will try the extra point from the 10-yard line. Kick is up, and it is good. So the Raiders come out running and throwing Reggie Rucker, and they move at the length of the field to draw first blood. Ensign capping that drive off. Take another look at the touchdown run by Big Myron Elsey. Good push by that Harding offensive line. And I think, once again, that was an excellent drive. Well, uh, a nice blend of run and pass. And Ensign did an excellent job of leadership on that drive. Boy, that looked like a team that was extremely well drilled on offense, Reggie. They went to the left, to the right. They threw it to three different receivers, two different running backs. The quarterback ran a draw play. Uh, it doesn't get too much better than that. I was very impressed with the timing on the pass patterns. Ensign got the ball there to the receivers as they were coming out of breaks. The receivers ran discipline patterns. This is a well-drilled offensive football team. Excellent crowd on hand at the Rubber Bowl. They're still filing in, and uh, Warren Harding well represented from the Youngstown area here this afternoon. Bragging rights, of course, Harding located in the Northeastern corner of the state of Ohio and Cincinnati Princeton in the southwest corner. I understand that there's not a lot of sectional rivalry here between these two teams. It's just a focused football team as we talk about Harding. They just want to win the championship. They don't care who it's against. Once again, it's Freddie Brown covers up the football and he is finally knocked down at about the 28-yard line. So let's see what kind of uh, offensive adjustments in the line that Cincinnati Princeton's made. Well, Cincinnati Princeton just wants to get back to what it does well. It doesn't need to panic. They want to get the football to uh, the people on the wishbone and, and do not turn the football over. Cincinnati Princeton on the season, Reggie, has averaged nearly 260 yards a game on the ground. This time it's the pitch to Overson, and he is really wrapped up and stacked up at about the 34-yard line. I think that's one way to get started for Cincinnati Princeton is get the football to Overson, let him get out there on the outside and, and weave a little bit and work a little bit, because if he gets loose, he's the guy that can break it all the way for Princeton. Only two losses on the season for the Vikings of Cincinnati Princeton. They lost to Middletown 10 to 7 in a very close contest and then were defeated by Cincinnati Moeller 28 to nothing. Batman Cuso, the athletic director and head coach. Houston reads the defense, decides to keep it himself across the 36. It'll bring up third down and two. And for those of us in the state of Ohio that have had the pleasure of knowing Pat Mancuso, 31 years he has been at the wow. helm. Six times he has been to the championship game, and of course he's won three of those. 
with the success he's had, you probably figure that he's been offered other jobs, college and so forth, but he likes what he do does. He likes the kids, and I think that that's, uh, says a lot about Pat Mancuso. Third and three, Houston with the late pitch. And around the corner goes Freddie Brown, and he has enough for the first down. And that time you saw the nice timing between the quarterback, Houston, and his tailback, Brown. Don't let Brown get away. He's 5'7", 140 pounds. They might be calling him downtown Freddie <laughs> Brown. You let him get on the outside. Good pitch by Houston. You're going to see a little move here by Brown that allows him to get around the outside and picks up some additional yardage. This is the kind of drive that Cincinnati Princeton needs. They need to build some confidence right now. So it's first down and 10 now. Dive play and running very, very hard off right tackle was Olverson Moyle. Boy, Reggie, he showed some power on that play. Well, I tell you, it took a lot of nerve by Lamar Harris to get that football to Olverson because Olverson was actually in front of the handoff, and Lamont had to reach forward and get it to him. He wasn't waiting. Good explosion out of the block by James Olverson. Make it second down now, and, and a deuce. We're liable to see plenty of offense here this afternoon. Off inside to Olverson and is finally game tackled and pulled down at about the 44, but uh, a gain of about six on the play. Cincinnati Princeton has found something that works off that right side. Olverson with that good start. He is the featured back, and they're pounding on that right side of the line there. Olverson averaging 6.4 yards per carry throughout the season, 18 touchdowns, and there you see the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes, John Cooper, who is on hand and looking at a couple of different players. Also saw the University of Akron head coach Jerry Faust in attendance. Yeah, I'm sure that if the truth be known, there are several Division I coaches uh, from throughout the state of Ohio and some other states as well that are on hand to watch today. You said that right. If you want some excellent football players from major programs and then some not so major, come to Ohio. They've got some football players in this state. Well, now you see trotting onto the field number 77, Corey Stringer, who plays offensive tackle and defensive tackle, and he may be the best player on the field here today. Uh, yeah. Look at this young man inside. He's extraordinary. Nice dip inside. Olverson gets to the corner. Watch out. He's got the speed. Finally chased out of bounds at the 23-yard line. See, for Cincinnati Princeton, that kind of play is the equivalent of a long pass by Warren Harding because they live and die off the wishbone. They have to look for plays that gain big yardage, and usually it's a toss or a pitch to, the, to one of the halfbacks. These little scat backs, they can run. They get on the outside, and usually... Some of the high school kids just aren't fast enough to get out there to support the run. First down and 10 now. Princeton trying to push this thing in and tie up the football game with 134 left to go here in the opening quarter. And inside uh, the 20 to about the 19-yard line goes James Gatewood. I was going to say the James boys are in the backfield, Reggie. Gatewood and Olverson. Yeah, and they're big thieves, too. They'll take that yardage from you every time they get mm -hmm. the football. Tell you, one thing you have to also be aware of as you run the triple option is that you must take care of the football. Now, this is scoring territory down here, and the one thing you don't want to do is come out of here without scoring some points. You have to take care of the football. Solid drive. Houston going to take it himself. Shows the great athletic ability and speed, and Lamont Houston makes the big play for the touchdown. Good read by Houston, who came out of there, head up, looking for his key. He saw the hole inside, he ducked in there, and you're going to see the explosion. Now, he comes out of the wishbone, he sees that they're overplaying the pitch man. He breaks right up inside and outruns everybody. Lamont Houston. Touchdown number 14 on the season for Lamont Houston. They have spread the wealth around. Blaylock on to try the extra point. And so Cincinnati Princeton comes storming back Reggie Rucker to tie this ball game at seven apiece. If you can't stop that dive play right up the middle, then you're going to have big time trouble with the wishbone. Take another look at it there. Actually, Houston breaks a tackle right at the line of scrimmage, and at 5'9", 170, you might not think he's that strong, but he actually got away from a player right at the line of scrimmage, and he made it happen. Boy, if you're a defensive coordinator for either side, <laughs> you're probably in a panic state right at this point. 
Well, I think both coaches knew coming in that they had very potent offenses. That's why they're where they are today. They had outstanding offenses, and they breezed through their regular schedules and breezed through the playoffs. And now you're talking about uh, one possession by Harding. They scored two possessions by Princeton, and they scored. Yeah, but what about defense wins football games, Reggie? Not at this level. <laughs> you put your best players on offense in high school. Remember that. Okay. So when you start uh, looking for a head coaching <laughs> job, Mr. Shriner, you'll know when you get a kid that can play, put him at quarterback or halfback. Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hire you as the offensive coordinator, so that will start from the very beginning. You better like passing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure they're... Did they say that he was down in the end zone and they'll start on the 20-yard line? I suspect that's probably what the call is. And so... Warren Harding will start first and 10 from their own 20 in case you've just joined us. We are uh, all tied here at the Rubber Bowl, seven apiece with 55 seconds left in the opening quarter. Hmm. All right. First down and 10 for the Raiders. We'll move the length of the field, 85 yards the last time they had the football. Sign looks right, throws left, and a beautiful reception by Omar Probert, who is finally pushed out of bounds at the very last moment, or he might have gone 80 yards with that play. Omar Probert showing a lot on that one play. Well, you got to be drooling if you're a college scout because, first of all, look at the leaping ability. Great concentration. Now the running ability. The excitement after the catch. A couple of 360 moves right there and to the outside. Look at Omar Probert. What a play. Sam Young, number 26, the last guy to touch him or it would have been off to the races. Butler shakes off one would-be tackler and is finally pulled down at the 48-yard line. Well, you have to love the concept. Spread them out and then find your hole. Spread them out and let them play. I think Chris Ensign continues to throw the football as accurately as he is. Uh, Princeton will just not be able to stop this, this uh, Harding team because they're going to have the, the pass at will. Plus, you'll see that those four- and five-yard games whenever they run the football. Ensign comes in having completed 54 of 104 throws on the season for over a thousand yards and 15 touchdowns. Butler this time on the delay finds some running room turns the corner and once again it is Sam Young who chases him out of bounds. I want to tell you this is just a mismatch with this offensive line from Harding against Cincinnati Princeton. Anthony Butler of course is making it all look so very glamorous but it is the tough work being done in the trenches by people like Stringer and and the Sean Daniels that's making this thing possible. Chris Julian, Mike Cromer and also Jermaine Brown on that offensive line for Harding. This time Butler is strung out and driven out to the short side of the field maybe picked up a yard or two at best. It may be the only no game play that they've had. And we have now, I think, come to the end of the opening quarter. And uh, so we'll take a break here. We'll come on, we're ready to start the second quarter. Cincinnati Princeton has won three state championships in 1978, 1983, and 1987. And uh, they were runners up in 72 and 88. Pretty good program. Oh, no question. Now you may, excuse me, Danny, you may have heard more about Cincinnati Moeller. But uh, Cincinnati Princeton, I think, has really come into its own recently and has done a very good job with the program. At the end of that last running play, Anthony Butler was uh, down for quite some time, but there you see Anthony up and running off the field, so he had the bell rung, but apparently he'll answer the bell in the next couple of series. Treated unkindly when he left the playing field by a number of Cincinnati Princeton defenders. Big difference in this one, Reggie, and we can maybe elaborate on this, is the fact that Cincinnati Princeton has a much smaller defense, quickness, but much smaller, and Warren Harding's offensive line is controlling the flow. Really are. Second down at about nine. Inside with a quick drop and a pump fake. Now he's chased out of the pocket, directs a little traffic. Pops up the football, but it goes out of bounds at about the 22-yard line, and Ensign took a pretty tough hit. Yeah, Ensign could have avoided that hit. He had a number of people open in the secondary, 
but I think he probably wants the safer route here, which is just to keep the football. He sees a few people out now. He's pointing. He's asking for blocks because he's going to run the football, and that could have been disastrous for Warren Harding, but a good hit by Princeton player. And a good look at Phil Anarella, who is uh, piloting this Warren Harding program and has done so to the tune of 13-0 here in 1990. Third down and short. And guess what? The short yardage guy is 250-pound fullback Myron Elsey, who will have a feeling Reggie delivers most of the time. Well, you know you're in trouble when the other team's fullback is bigger than every guy you have on defense. So <laughs> you've got to hit this man. You see Elsey coming right through there again. I would expect to see Ensign go right back to the throw. Now this time Richardson split out wide to the right. Provit is anchor to the left. Backs in the eye formation on this first down play. Ensign with a quick drop, takes the slant, goes the other way with it, intended for Provit, and misses him. I think you have to like Ensign's ability to look one way, Reggie, and throw the other. Something very difficult to teach even college players, but you saw Ensign look to the right, didn't like what he saw, and he comes back to the left. Probably his first real bad pass, though. Both teams offensively moving the football. Look at that, to over 200 yards in total offense. And no turnovers as of yet, although Ensign coughed up the football that last series, although it trickled out of bounds. Harding with the more balanced attack. Princeton, no, pa no uh, passing yards. Blitz is on. Ensign gets it picked up, throws it over the middle. Richardson grabs it and is finally wrestled down at the seven-yard line. So all three of the wide receivers now, Reggie, have entered into this game with at least one reception. Kendall Richardson was looking for this ball a little sooner. And had he gotten it sooner, he probably would have scored. Ensign now picks him up late. Richardson takes the nice catch, takes it into traffic, and holds on to the football. That's the other thing that you like to see. I know you as a wide receiver, Reggie, not only catching the ball, making yardage, but hanging on to it. Yeah, because usually it, that, Danny, that's important too, but you want to see wide receivers today see what they can do after they make the catch because these are perhaps your best athletes and you know they can break the thing. Well, first down now and goal to go at about the six as the uh, officials hold up momentarily and it would appear as if Cincinnati Princeton has called for time. <laughs> bad idea. Princeton really wants to get some bigger people inside. They know that Harding is perhaps going to go to the big guy, Myron Elsey, at 250 pounds. He's gonna, 250 pounds is going to pound him right up inside. All right. Talking about big people, well, of course, the Cavaliers will be playing some basketball. And I'd like to tell you a little more about that. However, I don't have the promo, nor do I see it on the screen at this point. So we'll go back to uh, talking football, Reggie Rucker, at this stage. And let's talk about uh, a situation where you've got a big guy like Myron Elsey, and he's already scored once. Now, if you're Princeton's defense, are you looking for him? And if you're the offensive coordinator, do you fake to him and go somewhere else? Well, I think you stay with uh, you stay with uh, Elsey because this is what you've been doing all year long, and. You can outsmart yourself. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And certainly Elsey has been successful running this football inside. On the first down play, they give it to Butler. He was hit at the five and ends up at about the four-yard line where it'll bring up second down now and goal to go. Well, they're running right behind Corey Stringer, that offensive tackle we've been telling you about. Stringer is 6'5", 284 pounds. He's a junior, and he is... First team all Ohio. And you told me that you had a chance to take a look at him, and uh, he's a lean, mean machine at 6'5". I, I like him. <laughs> Second down, goal to go. Power formation for Warren Harding. Last back gets it. Butler, and boy, he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Princeton's defense trying to fire up and force Warren Harding to do something other than try and pound it inside. Well, Princeton finally has started to neutralize the offensive lines charge at the line of scrimmage and they're not catching the blockers like they were doing on that first series they're really coming forward and neutralizing the offensive people and that's why the runner had no place to go and as Reggie already mentioned uh, Jerry Faust on hand here at the Rubber Bowl where the University of Akron Zips play their home games and of course many many years a uh, outstanding high school football coach at Cincinnati Molar so he's familiar with Princeton's uh, offense 
Ensign rolls out to the right, has time, and is going to just waltz right into the end zone. Slick move there. Cool customer, Chris Ensign. You can look for a lot of things in quarterbacks, but you had better look for things like poise, leadership ability. Then I'd say start looking for things like running ability and arm and, that's, and that type of thing. But there was an outstanding move by Ensign right at the goal line, and he faked the defender off his feet. Now, if he doesn't already have enough to do, he's got to spot it and kick it through. <laughs> I wonder if he drove the bus over today from Youngstown. Look at him. He's counting. He's making sure. What is, what is, that shows you a lot of presence. <laughs> this one is... Up and it is good. So with 9.46 left to go here in quarter number two, Warren Harding is yet to be stopped, Reggie Rucker. They lead 14 to 7. I don't think you can stop Warren unless you stop the pass offense somehow. I don't know how Cincinnati Princeton is going to be able to do that, but at some point they either had to put more pressure on inside or cover the receivers closer. All right, we'll pause now for this local break. We've got second quarter action. Harding leading 14 to 7 in the Division I state title game. Mid-American Conference football fans prepare for the Harding over Princeton. We've seen plenty of offense already in just a little over a quarter here from the Rubber Bowl. Inside the kick, Freddie Brown and James Olverson back deep for the Vikings. And this is a short kick taken by one of the up people across the 30-yard line to about the 33. Jesse Olverson that picked that ball up on the hop. And he is a starting tight end, so he obviously knew what to do with the football when he grabbed it. Princeton drove it the length of the field the last time they had their hands on the football, but they find themselves trailing in this one 14 to 7. Mm -hmm. And as I said, this team has run the football stupidly. They do not have any passing yards. You wonder at some point if that won't get to them. Houston dips inside. Olverson is finally knocked out of bounds at about the 35 yard line. Kamara Dean. From the secondary had the initial hit. I think we're going to get a flag on this play. I saw a lot of hitting going over there, going on over there. I wonder if some of it wasn't a little too late. Here's Overson right here, gets a shot there. That's Kamara Dean that makes the hit. And he's out of bounds. Overson is out of bounds now. Now the tackler should let him go, but he continues to pull and drag. Let's see if the official doesn't go for a flag. Yeah, he, he throws it. Oh, yeah. Good call. You see the penalty situation has been a very well played game here through the early stages. That was Milton Henderson who made that last tackle and should have let go. Brings up first down and 10. 921 left to go here in the opening half. And it's been a very entertaining Division I state championship game thus far, if you like offense, that is. Houston with a throw and he's got a wide open receiver and he's finally pulled down across midfield at about the 38 yard line. Now that's the right thing to do Denny because now you give the defense another look. You know now that you can throw you have thrown you were successful at it. Williams making a good move inside there. He's a big target at 6 2. Aaron Williams with his fifth reception on the season. I kidded Pat Mancusa when I talked to him earlier this week. He said, well, Denny, we only throw it five times a game, but I may air it out in the title game. We may throw it ten times. <laughs> Olverson got a quick start, and nobody's able to really pull him down until he is inside the 30, out at about the 28-yard line. James Houston appears to have that play to Olverson, that dive, quick dive play right off the right side anytime he wants it. Simply, Princeton is outmanning Harding off that right side. And of course, they're running to their best offensive tackle. That's Blackwell. It brings up now first down and 10 for the Vikings of Cincinnati Princeton, who have been in this position before. Gatewood lunges forward to about the 31-yard line. I think anybody who has ever played football 
what you're seeing there is the most basic play in football. Straight dive play with straight ahead blocking. It's man on man. You know, you're either going to beat your guy or you aren't. There's nothing fancy about it. And that's what Princeton is having some success with right now. That straight ahead dive play attack. Second down and make it about eight yards for Cincinnati Princeton. Houston looks to throw, lobs it up over the top, and this one is picked off in the secondary by Dean. Kamara Dean has some running room, and he is finally dragged down at the 11-yard line, and it was uh, a tug of war with the football on the goal line. Dean coming up the winner. Kamara Dean, what a play. Not only does he cover well, watch Houston. Houston has a man open here if he just leads him a little further, but he doesn't. The ball hangs up. Look at Dean making a catch. He was going for Williams again. Aaron Williams, and now he takes the football. Look at the hit there. Oh, my. By, by Omar Provitt. Now here comes Dean showing his running ability. Tough break for Princeton. Well, the Vikings had it right down there. And had Houston been able to loft the ball just a little bit higher, Williams was behind the secondary. Probably would have been six points. He was. Instead, it turns up a turnover. And so with 7.30 left to go here in the opening half, Warren Harding has the football back. Yeah, sometimes you have a tendency in there, Denny, when people are coming at you, if you're Houston, to not throw that ball, not lead that receiver. That's why our quarterbacks need to be set and have that good foundation when they throw the football to throw it more accurately. Harding leads 14 to 7 in case you've just joined us. A little over seven minutes to go in the opening half. Ensign in trouble. Now he just rips it as hard as he can throw it and Coleman oh, wow. pulls it down. He will go the distance. Oh my goodness. Being some superior talent. In the NFL, they would say we were just out personnel. First of all, Ensign gets jammed up here, gets away, then he just lets it go. Now you can't see it, but Omar Prophet, I mean, he just drove it. He just runs to this football, outrunning everyone. Another example of all the explosion, all of the weapons that Warren Harding has on their offensive football team. Provitt with his sixth touchdown on the season and uh, may have just broken this title game wide open. Ensign on to try and add to the lead. And this one is no good as he misses it to the left. So Ensign, who throws the big touchdown bomb, probably has the adrenaline still flowing and he uh -huh. misses the extra point. Omar Provitt, number 28. Three receptions, 120 yards today. What a burst of speed we saw from Provit as he accelerated to that football, made a nice catch. Of course, easily outdistanced everybody in the secondary. So it makes it 20 to 7. Harding strikes very quickly. And that's really a 13-point swing, Reggie, when you think about it, because Princeton had it right down there when the ball was intercepted. Sure is, and you know we told we talked about this very scenario during our open. We talked about the advantages and disadvantages of the wishbone attack. It's great as long as you're ahead, but once you get behind, the, the opposition can make you come away from your style of play, come out of your philosophy. And anybody that does that knows that it is extremely difficult to win when you're not accustomed to doing something. So with 6:57 left to go here in the opening half, Harding leads 20 to seven trying to keep that unbeaten season alive and make it a championship season as well and I don't think it's Princeton's offense at all that's the problem here I just think that Warren Harding has just so many weapons on their own offenses that and and Princeton's defense can't keep up with the personnel back deep it's young and Olverson Ensign's getting a, a break from kicking off as well. Short kick. And some good moves. Finally, that's where Cincinnati Princeton will start. First and 10 from about the 37-yard line as Curtis Chenault, starting tight end, returned that kick. 
Well, two yard or two two plays, I should say, 88 yards. Took him 105, throw an 84-yard touchdown reception. No time to panic yet, though. Princeton needs a score, but it, they just need to continue to do what they do best and see if they can't get back in the football game. But don't start just trying to air the football out. It's not time for that yet. Houston stops on a dime, fakes the throw, now kicks it outside to Williams. What a play that time by Lamont Houston, who went all the way through the repertoire. Well, Houston was denied the, the, the uh, expression of that play to his left. Stop had the presence of mind to come all the way back to the other side. Now watch this. See, he's going to be cut off here. Number nine is Houston. He's going to be cut off there by two black shirts. Comes back the other way. It apparently was a pass. It may have been a halfback pass. And he realizes that he can still throw the ball and it be a legal play. Nice read that time by the junior quarterback. And it's second down and about three. Near midfield. Olverson gets it on the dive. Keeps the legs churning. Leans forward. And Olverson has enough for the first down. That play has been good for them. See where they're going to spot the football. Is it uh, at the 48? Now the official says no need to measure. That's plenty enough for the first down. But I agree with you, Reggie. No time to panic. Because Cincinnati Princeton's offense has really run well here today. Mm -hmm. They've just got one touchdown to show for. Mm -hmm. A little reverse this time, and Brown gets it. And it's finally pulled down at about the 50-yard line, and that was a beautiful open field tackle provided by LaShawn Ziegler. This pitch goes to Terry Evans here. Watch Houston. Nice pitch just where you want it to be. Excuse me, that's number 29, Fred Brown. Looked like it might have gone for more than that, but Ziegler came up and, and made the nice open field tackle as it brings up now second down and eight. It takes some athletic ability when you're out there on that front of the room when you're a halfback and you make a solo tackle. Especially a guy like Freddie Brown, 5'7", 140, and he is a true scat guy. Yeah. This time, Lamont Houston is wrapped up in the backfield, got back to the line of scrimmage. That was probably it. Now it's third down and eight. Now this is, this is what's tough for Princeton because if you are a wishbone team, the, the, the uh, tough plays for you are third and seven, eight, nine yards win. It's, that's too far to run, and you're not a good passing team. So those are tough downs for a Wisconsin team. And considering the fact that Princeton's defense has been unable to stop Harding's offense, you sure don't want to give them the ball back. No, you don't. Let's see what they come up with here. Straight drop. And this one is nearly picked off right at the line of scrimmage by LaShawn Daniels, who had those big mitts up in the air. LaShawn Daniels, also one of, that, one of those outstanding tackles on offense, knows that Princeton's going to pass. Now watch him get up in the air there. I think this is a question of just throwing the football too low, not, being, not having it high enough to get over, uh, over the line of scrimmage. Prove it back. There's... Blaylock to punt, averaging nearly 39 yards a kick. And he gets all of this one. Provit catches it at the five-yard line on the move. A couple of nice shake and bake moves, and he is finally, well, he's finally chased out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Omar Provit gets a lot for his money, Reggie. Yeah, he can dance. He's, <laughs> he's a good-looking athlete. I mean, he just refuses to go down. Warren Harding will start first down and 10 now with 4.03 left to go in the opening half. And they lead in this one 20 to 7. They scored from a one yard plunge, courtesy of Myron LZ, early on in this one with 4.35 left to go in the opening quarter. And then a touchdown run by Ensign and an 85 yard pass to Omar Provitz. And we've got a whistle before the snap. And the Cincinnati Princeton has called for timeout. You're wondering about next year. No relief in sight because Warren Harding returns most of these players with the exception of Chris Ensign. But they have a very capable replacement in Chauncey Coleman. So this is a football team that 
I expect to see back here again next year. All right, let's move back to basketball. Sports Channel, of course, is the cable home for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Stay tuned in December as the Cavs take on the Chicago Bulls. That's December 15th. The Lakers are in town on December 19th. The New Jersey Nets, December 21st. And the Portland Trailblazers on December 29th. Cleveland Cavs basketball live on Sports Channel. How about getting me some tickets for that Lakers game? No problem. Can I hit you up for some? Yep. Okay. What do you need, two? <laughs> yeah. Two, two tickets. All right, I'll go ahead and pencil that in. Of course, I'll talk to Jim Jones. Between Jonesy oh, and I, we got to be able to come up with two tickets. Okay. Yeah, I'm expecting you guys to come through for me now. You know what his nickname is? Ticketron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. He, he needs a ticket agency just to bring his family. <laughs> That's exactly right. 4.02 left to go here in the second quarter of play. Warren Harding leads in the Division I title game 20-7, to and they have the football. Well, you know that position on the field means nothing for this team. They'll throw it anywhere. Butler stacked up at the line of scrimmage, decides to bounce it to the outside, and is finally chased out at about the 21. I saw Anthony Butler do something that you see veteran runners do. He changed hands with that football once he broke through the line of scrimmage. I thought that was... Uh, very adept. Watch this play here. Now, as soon as he gets through the line, he's going to do something real smart and real quick. Watch. Shift the ball. Watch. Shift him. See that? Put that ball away from the tackler. Very good. Second down and just a short one for the Raiders of Warren Harding. some time. Kendall Richardson nearly came up with a one-handed stab, but it goes incomplete. It brings up third and one. See, Warren Harding takes those three-step drops, and with those big tackles, you can't get around to this guy, so he stands in there, and he can pick out one of those three receivers. Now, watch this. He takes the three-step drop, one, two, three. Those tackles set strong, set quick. No pressure whatsoever. He could run this football. Look at him directing traffic. He's got all the time in the world to throw. I actually felt here he picked out the wrong player to throw the ball to. Well, that would have been a very tough catch indeed. Third down now and one to keep the drive alive. Good LZ hit. gets the ball and maybe gets to the line of scrimmage. Now we'll just have to see what kind of a spot they come up with. Well, it was Jamie Phillips, number 46. Phillips is 6'1", 210 pounds. He's a senior. He actually makes the hit on LZ that stopped his forward progress. And they're going to say that uh, the big fella leaned forward just enough to get the first down, so Harding keeps the football with 3.32 left to go. That was a good play by Jamie Phillips. Good stick. He looks like a hitter, too. Mm -hmm. Got that big thing on his neck. Got a mean look on his face. He's got something hanging out the back of his jersey. Sure. Got yeah. the pads going, the tape, everything. <laughs> He's in on the action. Got to take him a week to get dressed. Oh, my. Butler just kind of threading through the secondary and has finally tripped up at about the 36-yard line, and he's an impressive running back. Yeah, I'm telling you, they can't see him. That line is so big, the fullback is 6'5", 250. He's just sneaking behind, dodging and hiding. What's this style of running here? He knows that uh, his size is an advantage. Now, see, he's just hiding behind that blocker right there, sneaking back over here behind this one, utilizing it, those blockers very, very effectively. First down now and 10 to go for Warren Harding. An efficient offensive team, to say the least. Butler sheds one tackler, and uh, it's finally wrapped up at about the 43-yard line. This almost looks like ball control for Warren Harding. Reggie, they're not throwing the ball. Well, as effective as this offense is, if you're a defensive team, you cannot afford to arm tackle and miss tackles. And I think that's what Cincinnati Princeton is doing a lot of in there at the line of scrimmage. That's why these runners are getting through the line, and then they're getting all of this yardage because you just don't see a lot of good hard sticking going on. The play by Jamie Phillips a couple of plays ago was the first real good stick that I've seen from Cincinnati Princeton. Clock rolling with 2.12 left to go here in the second quarter. And uh, really, if memory serves me correctly, that's the first ball that I've seen that Ensign's throw that really was uncatchable. Mm -hmm. And to take that step a little further as you look at Ensign there, football teams gain respect by the way the defense hits. If the defense isn't hitting, if they're not aggressive, if they don't make you pay a price, then you give the offensive players 
a tremendous amount of confidence that they can do anything that they want. And then if you're a defensive team, you're going to be in for a long, long day. Look at that, 279 yards. Well, it's interesting. On the season, Warren Harding has averaged just 265 total yards per game. Butler shakes loose again. He's been the hot running back in this one. Across the 45 to about the 43. I'll tell you what, he's going to set the record in this place. I don't know what it is, what it is but he's going to set it before it's over with because he is into the secondary before anyone is touching him. Good move right there. He's got good blocking out in front. Corey Stringer, number 76. Is, excuse me, that's LaShawn Daniels, number 76, who is pulling around that hole. They pulled the offside tackle that time. That gives you some idea of the athletic ability of LaShawn Daniels. Butler over 100 yards gained here in the first half. And uh, still a half to go. Inside quarterback draw, it looked like. He was hit in the backfield. I think we're going to get a holding penalty. came from the umpire. And umpires usually have their heads focused right on the, on the pile. Holding is the call. Jason Whitehead from the linebackers for Princeton was the player who made the play on inside. Well, with the exception of a couple of bad throws and one penalty, this has been a perfect offensive machine. I think the thing that's most impressive about him, Reggie, is that they're able to do so many things well, and we're talking about some sophisticated things, too. These aren't just base plays. <laughs> yeah, you start pulling offside tackles around and leading them through the hole on you, buddy, you in for some trouble. <laughs> if you're playing defense. <laughs> yeah. If you're the running back, it's great. Yeah, you love to see it. Especially with that offside guy who's about 6'5", 280. Well, this has always been a part of football, huh? Oh, yeah, the ladies having some fun. Uh, of course, the Princeton cheerleaders are going to try to exhort the troops here in the second half of play. Inside under pressure, scrambles, now makes the throw down the sideline, and once again, Probert comes up with a play and the touchdown. Well, that guy is just really talented player. I mean, you might think this isn't a big play to make for a receiver, but it really is because he's making an adjustment at full speed he's cutting back between two players then he's making the catch with distractions and then he's getting away for the touchdown let's give this guy some credit too chris ensign recognizing that he's got a tremendous athlete out there just puts it up for him now watch Provit cuts inside of two people makes the catch and young man i think you can do without this you're a good enough athlete and player to have a little more class than that don't start that stuff I have a feeling that might be one of the discussions right there, but nevertheless, you're right. And as a player who caught a lot of touchdown passes in your own right, uh, no sense in aggravating the defense. You've already done that by scoring. Yes. And I think uh, all he needs is a little talking to, and sure. he'll hey, be okay. He's a, he's a fine player. Pretty exciting. <laughs> he's already got an 84-yard touchdown pass. It's been a big, big day for Omar Provit. And uh, the good news for... Head coach Phil Anarella is that uh, Probit will be back for another season. I, I'm saying this whole Warren G. Harding football team is back, buddy, except for the quarterback, Chris Ensign, and they've got a guy who is sitting in the wings waiting, Chauncey Coleman. Uh huh. <laughs> Look out, Ohio. <laughs> well, they might just be back next year. We've got uh, a timeout now that's being charged to Warren Harding with 106 left to go here before halftime. I guess the question now, Reggie Rucker, is. Uh, with the wishbone offense, does Cincinnati Princeton have enough and enough time to come back in the second half and win this football game? Well, if I saw more signs of life from the defensive unit, if I, if I saw that they could defend against the pass, I'd say yes, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case because they just have no idea of where people like Prophet and Kendall Richardson and those guys are. I mean, they're just running at, at, at will through the secondary. You know, we've heard so much about Overson the tailback for Cincinnati Princeton but uh, on the other side of the coin Anthony Butler for Warren Harding has been as good a running back as I've seen in a, quite some time because he's got a lot of help so he's got that offensive attack he's got skilled people everywhere around him and I think when you have that going for you then it uh, uh, makes your performance that much more tougher 55 yard touchdown pass and catch and uh, Omar Provitz nearly near 200 yards receiving here in the first half. I think there's some college coaches who might be looking in or who might be here would probably say, just give me Warren G. Harding's offense, period. 
<laughs> well, in pretty good shape. Looks like Harding will go for two after missing the extra point. Ensign rolls out. All alone is Tom Powell for the two-point conversion. And uh, that's just adding insult to injury as now the score is 28 to 7. See, there are a lot of philosophies about coaching high school football. And I guess after being in football some 30 years, Denny, I've always felt that if you can get kids to do this, throw the football at this level, they're virtually unstoppable. There's Probit making that sensational play once again. But you have to have the right athletes, and you really have to have a kid like Chris, Chris Ensign here, who's very smart, who throws the football. Look at these, look at these kids making the, these plays. They're making them all over. And of course, Tom Powell, who's been instrumental early on in the ball game, we haven't heard from him for a while, and now he comes <laughs> back. Well, Powell coming in at 31 receptions. Provin had 28, and Kendall Richardson on the other side had 28. So all three of those guys well obviously balanced. were threats. Mm -hmm. It's a well-balanced attack. And if that's not enough, you got a 250-pound fullback and then a scat back like Butler to go along with it. 106 left to go here before halftime, and it's 28-7. Uh, to 7. Harding on top, and uh, I would say very much in control of this Division I game. I guess you don't go 13 and 0. Well, guess who's kicking on? Inside. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I think he printed the programs as well. A squib kick taken and run across to the 45, and it's a fumble, and it is recovered by Warren Harding. So what else can go wrong? Or are they going to say he was the down. The player was down. Yeah, I agree with that call. No fumble, and they're going to say that I believe it was uh, Curtis Chenault, number 85. It was Chenault, as you could see right there. His knees were on the turf before the ball came out. One minute to go, so with the clock rolling, the Vikings break the huddle, and they look a little dejected at this point, and rightfully so. They trail 28 to 7. Houston back to throw, and he will air it out. And it was a jump ball at about the 15-yard line, which went incomplete. Well, he's taken them completely out of their game, the way they like to play. And you're asking Lamont Houston now to try to do the things that Ensign does when Ensign's been doing it all year. Lamont Houston has not been doing this all year. Everyone they have played, they have been good enough to be able to run the triple option against and be successful. But uh, different story against this very talented football team from Warren. Warren Western Reserve and Warren Harding. They combined this past year, and now you have just Warren Harding High School, and uh, obviously the combination of the two has worked out very nicely. This one run inside the 40 to about the 38. Well, you know, they had to satisfy a lot of people when they combined the two schools, so they kept the name Warren Harding, and they kept Western's colors, and they used Western's nickname. A little give and take there, right? Mm -hmm. And now both, if things work out, will lay claim to a Division I state championship. Well, I know uh, Warren Harding from a very good friend and from a teammate of mine, Hall of Famer, the great Paul Warfield. And if you take a look back in recent years, uh, all you have to do is look at Warren Western Reserve and realize that that's where the Browner family grew up. And that's a tremendous area for football. You're looking for some football players, and you're a coach out there. Better head east. Carry on up to <laughs> Warren Youngstown area. Exactly right. As uh, Phil Anarella right now probably feeling pretty good about his ball club, although any coach uh, worth his salt will go into the locker room and exhort the troops and say, all right, come on, we beat him in the first oh, half, yeah. but we got a lot of football left. Never say die. One thing you instill in young people when you play this game, you never give up. Houston drops, throws it to the outside, intended for Chenault. That one incomplete, so with 20 sec 27 seconds left to go in the second quarter, it'll bring up fourth down and about two. I think we would see the same scene taking place all around the country. Thanksgiving holiday always means high school championship games. 
We used to play ours at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. Is that so? Yep. Wolfville schools against the public school. Had to be kind of fun going back there uh, to play in the National Football League. Houston into the end zone, and this one is nearly picked off by Tom Powell. Williams started to jump, realized it was over his head, and Tommy Powell got hit right where it hurts, right in the hands with that one. You know, if that's not enough, they take those three kids on offense, and they put them into deep, the deep secondary on sure. defense. You know why they do that? It's because they know they can catch the ball. <laughs> and they can run. <laughs> and they're very athletic. TKO. And right now, you could say that this TKO happened in the second round because the second quarter showed three different Warren Harding touchdowns. Two of them, big-time bombs, and also a little run by Ensign, the quarterback. Now the question is, can Cincinnati-Princeton get back up off the canvas, shake off the cobwebs, and come back in the latter stages of this fight to win? Well, unfortunately, when you're running the wishbone offense, I, I find that next to impossible to do. You've got to catch up, and, and uh, if you had a great, great defense, maybe so, but we haven't seen that here today from Cincinnati-Princeton. And one of the things that head coach Phil Anarello is so proud of, Reggie, is the fact that through 13 games, his ball club has a plus 16 turnover ratio, and they have not given up the football here in the first half of play. Well, yes, and I think... Uh, I think he can credit his offense really with taking the other offense right out of the football game. Well, they've dominated the first half. We'll take a break here. It's halftime of the Division I state championship game. Warren Harding leading comfortably 28-7. Skyline in the background. Warren Harding leading 28 to 7. They scored three times in the second quarter to break this one open at halftime. And uh, speaking of uh, outstanding shows and festivities, uh, it's now time to take a look in and a listen as well to the outstanding band from the high school at Cincinnati Princeton. High School Athletic Association, Claire Mascaro. And Claire, uh, give us some idea of how the association formed. I know it was way back in the early 1900s. Uh, yes, it was, Danny. You know, at one time, there were very few restrictions, and many coaches at that time were playing. So a group of superintendents down in the southwestern part of the state decided, like, hey, we need to do something about this. The association was actually formed in 1907. We had our first state championship in 1908. There were 30 schools in the association at that time, 23 cent individuals. It was state cross track and field. Let's talk a little bit now about some of the other sports that uh, you are involved in, uh, not only football, for sure. Yeah, football just won, and I think your viewers should recognize that we actually have 15 different sports, and we sponsor 22 state championships for boys and girls competition. And I think also, Denny, uh, we feel so strongly about athletics and the values along with academics. Your viewers should realize that we have over 250,000 young men and women participating in interscholastic athletics in grades 9 through 12. That's not counting what we have in our 850 junior high schools. Sounds like a pretty difficult job. I know that you signed on January 1, 1990, so you've almost come full circle. How about a, a report card, a report on what you've done this past well, year? Uh, Danny, it's just been exciting. I've been very blessed to be in a position I have working with our staff and with the coaches, school officials, and the young men and women in our programs and officials. It's just been exciting. I've been most, most blessed, believe me. Let's talk about the future of the association. I know it's a very, very difficult job. Each and every year you have to make adjustments. What's uh, perhaps coming up in the, in the next 10 years? I know one of the adjustments we have to make, just like uh, your viewers, uh, our costs just keep escalating. And actually, we're concerned about that. Our insurance costs for our young men and women that participate are skyrocketing unbelievable. And then we're looking for additional programs. 
we see on the horizon there seems to be a lot of interest in boys volleyball there seems to be some interest being generated in girls golf and also in the northeast part of the state there seems to be some interest in slow pitch softball all right well uh, keep up the good work and enjoy the second half oh thank you and i appreciate the job you do with high school sports and uh, as far as we're concerned it's the best well thank you very much claire mascaro the commissioner of the ohio high school athletic association we'll be back with more of our halftime festivities after these messages Princeton 7 as uh, we are watching the finishing touches provided by the Warren Harding High School Band and uh, both bands have done an outstanding job of entertaining the fans here during the intermission and uh, let's take a look at uh, what the two teams provided in the opening half to get people out of their seats here at the Rubber Bowl. The first score of the game was uh, LZ over the top. LZ at 6'5", 250 pounds using that bulk leaping ability to get in for the first score. So Harding led 7 to nothing at that stage. Then Houston went to work. Watch Houston cut inside here. Good vision, breaks a tackle right there, and sprints straight up the middle for the touchdown. Good quickness. So Lamont Houston brought Princeton right back, but then it was the quarterback in the other color jersey, number 12, Ensign, that scored from the three. So far, he's been the player in this ball game to get everything going for Warren Harding. Ability to throw the football, pick out people, secondary receivers now you see him running a little bit good move inside and fakes and gets to the flag touchdown made it 14 to 7 Harding and then uh, the big bomb 84 yards to prove it prove it showing us some great athletic ability in the second quarter particularly you're going to see prove it here just sprint to this ball just leave everybody behind ducking between two receivers there and on in for the score. And of course that was uh, the second touchdown I believe there the second that was the 55 yarder. He also had uh, an 84 yard touchdown reception in there as well. Second quarter was all Warren Harding Reggie after we were tied at seven apiece there in the opening quarter. One of those unusual situations where one guy's offense takes the other offense out of the ball game. Total yards take a gander at this. 346 for Warren Harding. 209 through the air. Boy you want to talk about balance. 137 
on the ground. Time of possession, not much different, but that's because it didn't take them too long to score. Yeah, I think it would be difficult to gain that much yardage running against air. So, you know, this Warren Harding football team is, is excellent in what it does. It stays with what it does, and I like to see that. I think it's a different style of attack, and uh, you can see the influence of professional football coming all the way down to the high school level in the passing game. Well, they play four quarters. Let's see what Cincinnati Princeton can come up with after the halftime intermission as we pause now for this local break. And we'll come back to the bowl where it's 28 to 7 Harding on top at halftime in the Division I state title game. Here at the Rubber Bowl where Harding leads 28 to 7 after the opening couple of quarters an explosive offensive team that's 13 and 0 on the season and trying to remain perfect here in 1990. Well if you look at uh, what has to take place in the second half for Princeton you know they they've got a long way to go and a short time to get there and the only way I think you can impact this football game in the second half is you've got to do some things differently on defense and the one way you can get yourself back into a football game is by causing turnovers in order to cause turnovers Princeton now is going to have to start gambling and when you gamble on defense primarily you talk about blitzing uh, some different schemes up front Whatever you have to do, you've got to do it if you're Princeton because you've got to force number 12, Chris Ensign, to make some mistakes. And the other side of that is, if well, you don't get to him and you don't force him to make a mistake, he's liable to kill you on top. If, 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 they, if they don't get to him, well, if they, if they try to come after him and Ensign gets rid of the football in time and hits some of these people that, he, that can run out there, they're going to score some points and he's going to get tired of kicking extra points. Mm -hmm. But the downside of that is if you don't go after him you're already down 28 yeah. to 7 at this stage and uh, really you don't have much to lose no you really don't and I think Princeton can do some things which might confuse inside and may cause some turnovers but that's got to be coordinated with the people in the secondary the people in the secondary have to know it's like if you're in baseball and you're throwing the ball outside okay the infield has to know it's an outside pitch so they can play accordingly the same way in football if you're blitzing then the cornerbacks have to know that you got to take away some inside so you don't give in the middle of the field and then be ready to run deep on the outside. Okay. Well, the good news is third quarter is ready to start. The bad news is if you're a Princeton fan, Warren Harding gets the football to start things off. <laughs> well, you can you can uh, see if your implementation of this new defensive concept is going to work in a hurry. You're not going to have much time. Omar Provet already has two touchdown receptions. He is back deep. Good hard line drive kick and Probit snatches it at the two yard line and he'll start the left return. Looks for a seam and he is pulled down nicely at about the 23 yard line. Beautiful open field tackle provided by Anthony Thomas. That's what I call playing some offense right there. They just ran out of time. Yeah. <laughs> TD, 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 TD. It's a bit redundant, don't you think? 209 yards passing, two touchdowns, and uh, let's see what Ensign does with his bunch to start quarter number three. And let's see if Princeton decides to go after him a little bit. First play, a straight handoff, and Butler, who was uh, a blizzard in the first half, ends up getting wrapped up and maybe loses a half yard on the opening play. Well, you've just got to get some penetration defensively. If you don't get any penetration, then Warren Harding is going to have similar success in the second half. I think Princeton will start bringing some of their outside people to blitz, and I think if we're going to see this happen, it better take place now because I'm, I can assure you that Warren Harding is going to throw the football. Well, now they come out in a pass set with three receivers to the right, and before the play has even started the officials come in and well failure to wear proper equipment is the call against Warren Harding here to start the third quarter well nothing else has worked maybe this will it's a five yard penalty so it'll bring up uh, second down and 15 for Warren Harding so whoever didn't have what they were supposed to have it better get it huh I mean, they would have been penalizing me all game long I never wore that stuff he didn't huh? oh, no. wanted to be a little faster and lighter huh yeah, at least you wanted to think you were <laughs> that's right it's all mental right mm -hmm. 
Three receivers set to the right. Ensign rolls out, has time to throw, and going up top. And this one is, is it picked off or not? They're going to say no. no. Tremendous play in the secondary. Powell, though, was behind the secondary. The ball was just underthrown. Throwing on the run here by Chris Ensign. Just doesn't get it quite far enough. Powell was out there with a couple of steps on the defenders. Had he thrown that ball maybe a step or two further, he would have been a touchdown. Shondale Wolfork was the secondary player that had his hands on the football and just couldn't pull it in. Shondale. Well, uh, so much for running the football. Well, third down now. Here's a key down because Harding has been converting these third downs. Let's get the blitzes on. Well, they thought about it. Now the linebackers stay, and Butler pays the price as he is shoved back. So Princeton's defense comes up big in the opening stop. They need to get some points on the board. Good defensive series for Princeton. I mean, that's exactly what you want to make the other guy go three downs and out. You see good penetration. Look at the aggressiveness right at the line of scrimmage. You see two helmets on the football, three helmets on the football. They weren't getting that in the first half. But they're going to have to do a lot of that. And signed with the kick. And it was a good one. Freddie Brown at the 45 tries to get to the outside and does. And a tremendous effort will give Cincinnati Princeton the football at about the 35-yard line. Now, that kind of effort can inspire a football team. I don't care how far you're down. And you may never catch up, but you want to play this way. You want to play aggressively. You want to go out with your heads held high, and I think that's a good start in the second half for Cincinnati Princeton. Well, Lamont Houston brings out the Vikings to start their first offensive set of the third quarter. Not much of a surprise. As the handoff goes to the right halfback, James Olverson. I think if you are Princeton, you go in, you take a look at what went well for you in the first half, and you try to stay with those plays. You try to eliminate the plays that, that didn't give you any yardage. You don't want to, you want to avoid bad plays. You want to just run the ones that you think are going to work. Earl Haley brings in the play on the second down and three situation. Again, but not as much running room this time for Olverson. I think that's a that's indicative of, of the point I was trying to make, Denny. In the first half, this particular play was one of the ones that worked almost every time. Third down and three, so little or no gain on that play, but you gotta believe Cincinnati Princeton is in fourth down territory at this stage. Oh yeah. Could be an audible being checked on by Lamont Houston and does not get the play off in time. So instead of third and three, now the problems have been compounded and it's third down and eight. Yes, Robert Black, number 57, the offensive guard, moved as Houston was calling audibles. Now watch. Okay, you're going to see some people. Moving on the line of scrimmage, once you're set, you can't move until the ball is snapped. They'll make it third down and eight after the critical penalty. And the Vikings find themselves behind the eight ball. Pitch at the last moment. Olverson off the left side, runs very hard inside near the 25, which is where he would have to get for the first down. Tremendous effort that time by the junior right halfback, but they'll come up about a yard short. Yes, that was a good pitch from Houston to Olverson, and Olverson makes a decision here that he's just going to try to cower his way for the first down. He's going to come up a little short, but right there, watch him decide to hit that stack and make it move. Too many black shirts right there. Harding fans want their defense to hold. Princeton fans want a first down to keep the drive alive. Give it to your best effort. Straight draw. That play has worked a thousand times, and it does so as Princeton keeps the football. Yeah, that's one of the running plays they're going to be running. I think the other running play that was that was good to them in the first half and was also good in the second half was the option left and pitching the ball back to Overson. And I think it appears that Overson or Houston will handle the football. 
You know, you're a prime believer of getting the ball into the hands of your best, most skilled players and let them do their thing. Get the ball to the stars. Now we have another flag thrown by the back judge. A legal procedure called against Princeton, so they make another mental mistake, and now it's first and 15. Yeah, the reason why these plays hurt you in addition to moving the ball back more is that you're wasting a lot of time here. They don't have any time to waste, and they can't afford to show looks and give the play away to the defense. Well, it's pretty obvious that Harding has made some changes defensively, too, because Houston's coming to the line of scrimmage, Reggie, and he's not liking what he sees. Yes, he's, he's checking off quite a bit, and I think that might be confusing some of the guys on the offensive team. A little cross buck big play, and Houston is hit in the backfield. A superb defensive play turned in by Kenny McElroy, one of the defensive ends. Kenny McElroy getting in there. You can see it right there. Good play, number 58. Breaks down the blocker and makes a tackle. That's a that's a defensive lineman's dream right there, to shed your blocker and then make a solo tackle for a loss in the backfield. Second down and 18 to go for the option-oriented Princeton Vikings. On the outside, nice run that time by James Gatewood, who picks up a few of the yards as he is tackled at the 22. Gatewood is a bigger back than Overson. Gatewood is about 195 pounds. He's more of a power back. Good pitch once again by Houston. Now here's Gatewood, number 32. He's going to see that crease, and he's just going to try to run over some people. Straight up runner. Third down and nine. Ball spotted at about the 21 yard line. I think if if you if you have to, you might have to go for half of this nine yards on, on third down. You might throw the football, but probably over some on the option left. Right up the middle he goes. He's dragged down by the jersey at about the 18 yard line. Keep in mind that Vikings need to get to about the 12 yard line for the first down. Not the play I like in that situation because you make Overson do one thing and one thing only. That's run straight ahead. If you bring him on the option, you give him the ability to do several things. Now with fourth down and six. The Vikings will go for it here. It's do or die in this situation. Well, they're in the formation that I like because Overson is probably going to throw over the middle is nearly picked off by Kamara Dean, who came up with a play that may have turned this game around originally when Princeton had it down there and it was 14 to 7. He pulled the wall away, made an interception, and then, of course, two plays later, the touchdown. I don't like this play because it's play action. And it's not, that's not fooling anybody. I think you want to get your skilled people down into the pattern and, and make Harding defend them and not this sort of thing. And I think, uh, as you saw, Kamara Dean was right there. We should have been. There was no chance to complete that pass. So Harding goes back on offense. And I guess, Reggie, you look at the score, it's 28 to 7. One would think that maybe they would start running the football a little more just to try and run the clock. As Ensign is pulled down at about the 15 on a nice defensive play, a loss of a couple. But do you think that perhaps uh, Phil Anarello will go more to the ground uh, to use the clock? I, I don't think so. Not, not in the third quarter here. I think their style of play is to throw the football first. And that's what got you here. And you don't abandon that thing. It's been too good to them. And there are some communications going on on the sidelines. Lamont Houston, if Cincinnati Prince is going to come back, Houston's going to have to start making some big plays. Quick handoff this time to Butler, who was wrapped up after he gains about three, and it'll bring up second, make it third down, and at least eight. Warren Harding has one of those offenses, Denny, that can dictate to a defense. They can make you go where they want to go. And the reason why they can do that is because of the speed, the pass catching ability of the people on the outside, and of course that little smart quarterback there knows where to go with the football. That's just as important as having the ability. Know where to go. Well, you have to read the defense and yes. determine where the best possible matchups lie. 
Third down and about nine. This time inside rolls to his left, throws across his body, and a terrific defensive play turned in in the secondary by Brian Keaton, who got a hand up because Ensign had an open receiver. Well, Ensign should not feel bad about that when it takes people like John Elway or Warren Moon to throw a ball like that. Now he's moving to his left, and then he's going to throw a pass that needs to be drilled on the run, and he does a very good job, but just not quite enough velocity to shoot it through there. He was intending that throw for Kendall Richardson. So the Princeton defense does something in the third quarter they didn't do much of in the first half, and that's stop the Raiders two times in a row. Bad snap. The kick wasn't too much better, although at least he got it off. And Princeton with excellent field position again will start first and 10 from about the 44-yard line. Then in that last series, I, I think I think that uh, Warren Harding did attempt to run the clock a little bit. They seem to come out of that attack style of theirs just a little bit. And I think that could get them in trouble if Princeton they would get something on the board in the hurry. But you have to look at Harding's defense. Uh, they have given up some yardage, but basically once Princeton got it inside the 15 yard line they've stiffened although this time Olverson runs it inside the 30 to about the 27. And get the ball to Olverson more I think if you get the football to him and on on the plays that are are designed to spring him for big time yardage then you can get back into the football game if you score here you got it 28 to 14 and anything could happen. It was fun that time Olverson heading back to the huddle was talking to the big tight end and Williams had a big smile on his face even though he's losing he's out there having some fun. And another off tackle play this time to the left side and that's about three yards inside the 25 this one still within reach if Princeton could score here uh, sometime in the third quarter. The other thing Princeton is doing is they're changing their look by formation. According to formation they're making Warren Harding defend them differently. In the first half you did not see a lot of uh, two receivers to the wide side. You're seeing a lot more of that now. Now look how the defense spreads out more. You have more natural lanes to run to. Houston fakes the dive with those quick feet. Scampers inside the 20 to about the 19. Going to be very close to a first down. Make it third down and uh, probably about a yard for Cincinnati Princeton. Well, there are lots of ways to defend people in football. You can defend by formation. You can defend by personnel. And I think Princeton right now is at least giving Harding a look that they have to defend by, and that's by formation. This is the third time now that they've done this, and I think it's hurting them. Well, that time looked like Mike Stacy might have moved at the left guard or left tackle position and that will cost Princeton five yards and we're really moving the football at that stage just to the third and one it'll end up third and six Mancuso is livid he is out on the field 31 years he has been roaming the sidelines at Cincinnati Princeton that of course is Harding's head coach Phil Anarella he's going to come out and talk to the defense And while we've got a moment here, the, this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Ohio High School Athletic Association and Sports Channel and is intended for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of these pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Ohio High School Athletic Association and Sports Channel Ohio is strictly prohibited. Well, Princeton breaks the huddle. They're ready to play football, and Coach Anarella will have to come off the field or he's going to be involved in this play. Well, get a hat and one. <laughs> He'd probably like to get in there for a few plays. <laughs> yeah. He used to have a high school coach that uh, in practice after the play and all the players would be in a pile, he would come flying from 10 yards and dive right in the pile. No. Get up, everybody. Get up. Get up. <laughs> His name wasn't Woody, was it? No. <laughs> Houston with a beautiful pitch. Good pitch and good block. Good Round run. to the outside. He's inside the 10 and finally pulled down at about the six yard line. Good play by Freddie Brown who 
ran very intelligently here. Now, here's where high school defenses have to be weak. They just don't have the coordination to be able to defend on the outside. Now, watch the patience Freddie Brown uses, allowing the blocks to take place. Now he uses his natural ability, and look at him, protect that football. Very smart run. Beautiful run by Brown, puts Princeton in scoring position inside the 10. Dive play and in for the easy touchdown is James Gatewood, his 12th score of the season. So Princeton at least is going to make this one an interesting afternoon. Yes, Princeton has made some significant changes in their style of play, particularly on defense. They're taking a little, uh, they're taking more chances, and they're just getting good plays now from that offense. And this is one of the plays that has worked all game long. The dive play this time is Gatewood. Often it has been. Overson, but Gatewood gets in for the second touchdown for Princeton. Extra point is up and it is good. So the Vikings are the first team to strike here in the third quarter with 148 left to go. It's a 28-14 game. And this is what you'd like to see from your team. You want to see the players play up to their ability. And I would have to believe that in the first half, Princeton was not playing as well as it can play. And this looks more like the Princeton that we have heard about. So Gatewood scores from about six yards out and gives the Princeton cheerleaders something to hoot and holler about. But 148 left to go in quarter number three in the Division I state championship game. It's 28-14. And I'll tell you what, there are a lot of people here. Right? This stadium holds about 40,000 people, so it looks like there are about 25,000 people in here, maybe more. Well, a nice afternoon to come out and watch a Division I state title game. Temperature in the low 50s when we started. To or cloud cover, but uh, the wind really has died down. I've always believed, particularly in the championship game, uh, taking a look at that first half, that Warren Harding probably isn't as good as it looked, and Princeton isn't as bad as they look. Provid is back. He has uh, been uh, probably the most valuable player, at least through three quarters in this one. Beautiful kick by Blaylock in and out of play, and so Harding starts first and ten from their own 20-yard line. Let's see if Warren Harden doesn't get back to the concept that has gotten them where they are. 13-0 coming into this ball game and 28 points in the first half. That's by throwing the football and throwing it with reckless abandon. Harding fans are starting to uh, cheer a little bit. They're looking for some more offense. They had plenty to cheer about in the first half. A little bit uneasy here because Princeton has gotten back on the board and they play defense tough on, on two straight series here. Now let's see if the defense can come up with another stop here. Butler hit in the backfield and he will lose at least a yard and all of a sudden the Viking defense is up in arms. Well one of the things you can do if you're up front you can start slanting to the strong side you can start some games with your front seven people and you can just try to confuse the blocking patterns of the offensive team. Now, I'm sure that Princeton is doing some of that. But on the other hand, Warren Harding isn't playing the same way it played in the first half. And I think they've got to go back to throwing the football if they're going to be into a tight squeeze here. Officials come out quickly before they even snap the football. And it looks as if Warren Harding may be offside. And so instead of second down and 11, make it now second and 16. This one's turning around, Reggie. Yes, one mistake down here, and you could have a seven-point ball game because if you throw the ball, the ball is tipped, or you fumble it, and uh, you've got your backs against the shadow of your own in, in line there, uh, it, it becomes more difficult to move the football in here. Yeah, if you look at this thing philosophically, Princeton's been to this title game a number of times. They know what it takes to win. with a quick drop and he'll take off and run and he is punished down about the 19 yard line hit very hard on a couple of occasions Rayshon Hutchins was the final player to finish it off I think Warren Harding is just out of sync right now they don't have any rhythm going for them and you can see the Cincinnati players now watch the hit now they weren't hitting like this in the first half now you're gonna see a good hit right there boom good shot right there Rayshon Hutchins in that cornerback position. Of course, as a cornerback, you see a player stood up and stopped. You gotta love that situation. Mm -hmm. Under a minute to play in the third quarter, and it's now 
Third down and 11 for Warren Harding. Powell is in motion. Now in the slot. Inside with a drop. Looks left, then back to the right. Kendall Richardson with, no, nope, make that probe it rather, with the reception out to about the 31, enough for the first down, and he went up and pulled that one out of the sky. I'll tell you something. If I were a college recruiter, he be knocking on some door real hard tomorrow. <laughs> this guy, Provit, can play. Watch this catch. Good blocking up there. There's the excellent pass protection from the offensive line of Harding and ball thrown. That's as difficult a catch as you're going to be asked to make if you're a wide receiver. Provit made it look easy and smooth. Look at the day he's having. Five receptions, 187 yards, and two touchdowns. And enough to keep the drive alive and possession of the football as we have come to the end of the third quarter of play. We'll take a break here from the Rubber Bowl, the Division I state title game. Warren Harding leading 28-14 on Sports Channel. Ah, look at the Sports Channel banner high atop the Akron Rubber Bowl, 28 to 14, Harding on top. And uh, Reggie, you know, and I, you and I were just chatting during the the last break. Uh, you're pretty impressed with number 28, Omar Provin. Yeah, he's one of the uh, really fine high school receivers I have seen in a long time, and just poised and just an exciting player to watch. That 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 means something too. First and ten, Harding with the football. Butler and. Anthony Butler starting to pick up where he left off in the opening half where he rushed for over 100 yards, a gain of about eight on that first down play. See, that's the influence of Provit on the defense. He makes one big catch, and now Cincinnati Princeton has two men out covering. You can't see it here, but he had, they have two men out covering Provit. Let's take one guy away from run support, and now here comes Anthony Butler again, and let's see if they're not back in rhythm now. Second down, and we'll call it about two yards for Warren Harding. Fullback Elzey gets the call and then gets blasted at about the 39, but uh, the big fella falls forward. It might be enough for the first down. Well, we're going to see a big play here to the offside because right now, Cincinnati Princeton, and the, uh, with a lot of respect for Provid, has put two players on him, which means that somebody someplace else along that line of scrimmage in the three wide receiver offense is going to be singled up either Tom Powell or Kendall Richardson and both of those players are to the other side there's no one on Tom Powell right now if they go to him he's got a big play call is to the fullback though a conservative call for Warren Harding on first down no gain whatsoever Princeton right there defensively third quarter stats Princeton coming back a little bit but they've come back because they have played the good defense. Matter of fact, they now lead in yards rushing, 194. But passing yards, that's still where Princeton needs to improve if they're going to get back to this football game because we're in the fourth quarter now, and of course now the clock becomes your opponent. And speaking of the clock, 10 minutes and 14 seconds left in the Division I state title game. Side, and it's Kendall Richardson who comes up with a catch. Rayshon Hutchins nails him at about the 48. Kendall Richardson with one of those stop patterns. Just goes down the field about eight, nine yards and turns, looks at the quarterback. As long as the defensive back is giving him a lot of room, there's no reason to do anything else. Well, when I talked to Coach Annarella earlier in the week, and I said, well, I know you guys like to throw the ball and mix it up. He says, we got three guys that can flat catch the football, and we got a little quarterback that can get it to him. <laughs> that presents some problems. Yeah, and the, minute you, the minute you double one, somebody else is open. Probit's out there all along with one-on-one -on -one coverage. Ensign keeps it himself, scrambles, does not go out of bounds uh, like a true running back is looking for extra yards. I mean, he's like a kid in a candy store right now. He can, there's so much stuff out there that he likes. He can't eat it all. Good fake there to LZ and just a quickness on the outside here. 
And watch this. Watch him tightrope that sideline. Gets back up inside for more yardage. Kendall Richardson, number 80, providing some blocking out in front. Good Sam, job. Sam Young providing the big hit in the secondary, but uh, a 17-yard run, and it would appear as if Warren Harding is back on track offensively. They had a brilliant second quarter where they scored three times. One pump fake now inside for the first time this afternoon is finally sacked. And John Johnson was one of the players that was in on the hit. Well, that's one way to stop a pass offense is to bring big time pressure. And John Johnson's coming right now. And he also had some help from Brian Keaton. John Johnson is the son of of Bob Johnson, Reggie Rucker. Bob Johnson. Guy who played for the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, yeah. The, the center Bob Johnson. Sure. Fine player. <laughs> We've seen a few football games. Mm -hmm. Ensign this time with a straight drop, and he's going up top with it. Powell kind of turned the wrong way at the last moment. Uh, one thing that comes to mind when you watch this passing game is his receivers are normally behind the secondary guys. <laughs> yeah, they usually have a couple of steps, and they make people backpedal in a hurry. Boy, look at his eyes. I used to look, want to look at quarterbacks' eyes to tell me where they were in a football game. I saw those eyes dancing around. I'd say, oh, we're in trouble now. <laughs> if you saw that calm, serene, confident look in the eyes, you knew that you were following a real leader. What if the guy wore glasses? Like Greasy? <laughs> you knew you were in trouble then, too. You probably knew everything about the playbook. Oh, Powell on the counter. Not only does he catch the football, but he runs pretty well. And it's going to bring up fourth down, low and long. Cincinnati Princeton's defense has done a marvelous job here in the second half of hanging on for dear life. You know, it doesn't seem fair. All these guys come back next year. There's Powell. Good run. He protects this football, too, because usually when you get hit from behind like that, you are susceptible to, to uh, fumbling the ball. Josh Johnson once again tracking him down. Yeah, big fella had a head of steam up, too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Princeton with another shot offensively. Ensign kicks it away. And this one into the end zone. So Princeton will start first down and 10 from their 20-yard line with 7 minutes, 11 seconds left to go, trailing 28 to 14. Key possession this time for Cincinnati Princeton. If they, with 7 minutes, 11 seconds left in the ball game, if they can get a score and take maybe 3 minutes to do so, then I think we could have a bond burner coming down here to the wire. But this is a very important series. They cannot afford to give the football up here without a touchdown. This is this is the game right here. Essentially, this drive is the ball game. Been a long, long season. You'd like to have one last shot to win, if at all possible. Houston's throw, kind of a well, a lame duck, but it's pulled in by Curtis Chenault, and the very first play from scrimmage is a big one, Reggie. Well, Pat Mancuso knows that this is it. You know, we got we can't leave anything in the in the uh, book right now. Let's go to the playbook and get some of the big plays out. Yeah, it looked like it had a lot of pellets in it, but it got there. It did the job. Curtis Chanel, 6'1", 75 pounds. He's a senior. Makes a nice play there. Now from the 45, a couple of fakes. Houston rolls out, and this one. Oh no! That's a Overthrown. Williams does not get the ball, but he gets a big time hit. Oh, I thought that was close. That was very close. Watch this here. Williams, ball's overthrown, and here comes Tom Powell, it looks like. Number 26, and that's a good shot there, but I don't know about that one. A friendly reminder that you're in the secondary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is for not catching it. Bang. It makes you wonder what you get if you do come up, <laughs> come yeah. up with the ball. Houston again to the air. This one is nearly picked off over the middle by Sean Johnson, who had it and then lost it. And he'll remember that play. Well, they're in four down territory now, Denny. And of course, if you commit to throwing the football, you make it a longer game because the clock stops. But that wasn't a very good pass. That ball was not 
lit, led properly, should throw that football in front of the linebacker and let your receiver run to it. Third down and ten. Uh, handoff goes to the inside, down to about the 41-yard line, so it'll bring up fourth down and six for yeah. Cincinnati Princeton. See, I consider that a wasted play, and it's just the, the time is too precious at this point to run plays that don't amount to much. Warren Harding fans chanting defense defense they realize if they stop Princeton right here that they'll probably win the division one title game if not who knows Houston with some clever faking gets to the outside and gets belted hard by Tommy Powell and I think he stopped him short of the first down not going to make it mm. when you commit yourself to that run like that you better be sure that you can pick it up because it was fourth down, and it was for all the marbles. Houston couldn't get to the sticks, couldn't get far enough. What a big-time hit by Tommy Powell. Watch Tommy Powell, who we saw make a big hit a couple of plays ago. Now Powell's going to come up. He knows where the first down markers are, and bang, number 26 right there, puts his shoulder right into Houston and stops him. Dead in his tracks. So with 6.04 left to go, all that Warren Harding wants to do now is just start to run the clock. Well, they put the ball on the carpet, which they haven't done for the majority of the afternoon, and it'll be second down at about 12. I'll tell you, Warren Harding has played the second half like they knew they had enough points to win because they had not looked sharp in the second half. They had such a big, comfortable lead. And they knew they were playing a football team that cannot pass the football well enough to come back. So uh, I think they're going to win the football game, but they sure haven't looked good in the second half. Which also you can be attributed to the way that Cincinnati Princeton has played. They've played much better defense. Oh, well, I think that's a good assessment. They obviously have not allowed any points here in the second half of play, and uh, uh, that's a testament to their abilities and the adjustments that they made at halftime. Butler looking for a seam out near the 40-yard line. It'll bring up third down and about six. <laughs> well, I think you have to be impressed, uh, Reggie, with the turnout of the Warren Harding fans here this afternoon. And of course, a little shorter drive from the Youngstown area than it is from Cincinnati, but <laughs> yeah. they've had tremendous support. Yes. Reminds me of, of another community around these parts called Massillon. Mm -hmm. Now this is the culmination, the big school Division I championship. And as we've already mentioned, John Cooper, Jerry Faust, a number of Division I head coaches on hand here this afternoon. You're going to see some outstanding players and some excellent teams in this situation. Richardson with a nice catch across the body and uh, leans forward for the first down. Reg, you keep shaking your head. I know you you've enjoyed watching this one from a standpoint of you've seen some kids make some excellent catches. See, this is experiential ability in that these kids have been in this position so many times. They've had so many opportunities to catch footballs and to run patterns and so forth that when they see difficult catches, they don't panic. They just make the proper adjustment and come through with the catch. Now that one was thrown to the opposite shoulder and Richardson simply pirouetted and made the play and then got the first down. See, I like it because it takes another skill level to be able to run an effective pass offense in high school like Warren Harding runs it. And they do it as well as anybody I've seen. Butler lunges ahead across midfield to about the 49. If you can get youngsters to, to move up to the next level and do the kinds of things that Warren Harding is doing, you know that when you put them against other high school competition that the opposition is virtually indefensible. There's no way to defend this sort of thing when you got the kind of offensive line that Warren ha Harding has. Well, it's been 16 years since Warren Harding has captured a state champion. Right, this is a state championship. Or how am I going to get this paint off of my face? <laughs> you know, if you're looking at this football team and you're very impressed with it, uh, you should be. They're ranked number four in the nation. That's how, that's how well they're thought of. Highly skilled personnel. It's been a while since I've seen a high school team throw the ball as effectively as this bunch has to as many different receivers as they have. Butler stutter steps, gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe even picks up a half a yard, and uh, 
clock runs now with 315 left to go. I think you also have to be impressed with their pass protection. And I think if you look at number 77 and number 76, you've got two tackles, 285 pounds, and they're streamlined and they're quick. And you have the foundation for protection of a Chris Ensign. And he has shown here this afternoon that given the opportunity to look up field a little bit, he'll throw the ball to the open man as we have an injured Warren Harding player that's uh, down at about the 50-yard line, and it's Anthony Butler. He might just be plumb tuckered out, Reggie. The 5'9", 165-pound junior tailback has rushed for nearly 150 yards in this one today. The Butler did it. <laughs> it's getting late, isn't it? Yeah, the Butler did it, and uh, <laughs> TKO happened very early in this one. It was the second round or the second quarter. TKO went to work. And of course, we're talking about Tom Powell, Ken Richardson, and also Omar Provit. And uh, Mr. Provit this afternoon had a big-time game, and uh, you're right. There are a lot of college coaches that are saying, excuse me, now what's the home address that I'll be mailing this yeah. to? <laughs> Butler gets up, and that's the second time that he's been down. Uh, he was knocked to the turf real hard in the opening quarter, but bounced back. And there you see 21 rushes, 123 yards. And he's been very instrumental in this state title. And he didn't have to do much in the second half because they had a 28 to 7 halftime lead, and they haven't asked a lot of him in the second half. And it's good to see him walking off a bit gingerly, but I think he's going to be okay. Nothing like winning a state title in any sport. Mm -hmm. uh, but football is always something special. I think the Cincinnati Princeton youngsters can hold their heads up high too because I like the way they have come back in the second half. They didn't quit at all. Anything but that. Well, this is impressive. A backup tailback gets into the football game. And who's this guy? And all Joe Threets does is run about 25 yards for the first down. Yeah, I think once again, I think, look at the offside pull right there. I think this is a tribute to the excellent line play of Warren Harding. Those people up there are big, they're strong, and they can run. Threets is a backup, doesn't see much playing time, and he's averaging five yards a carry. Mitch Cullen's on that pull at 6'4", about 210 pounds, but he can run. He got out in front of Reitz. Icing on the cake right now. Reitz through the line of scrimmage. is finally hammered at about the 23-yard line. Well, as always, next year, fellas, we're going to he had a fine season. See, if I were to coach, and I'm sure that Pat Mancuso will do so, but he will tell these individuals that uh, keep your heads held high. You've represented yourself and your school very well. You got here. How many teams can say that? Only two. No question about that. I mean, you take a look at a program like Cincinnati Princeton, the third time in four years that they have played for the championship. Some of the players are getting a little testy right now, and you know, there's some egos that have bruised, and I think some of the head coaches and ought to get out there and if they have to take some of these young fellows out of the ball game who seem to be taunting each other at this point. You don't want to do anything which dampens the spirit with which you've won a championship. Well, there's obviously in any athletic endeavor some Egos, as you mentioned, some frustration. I think you're right. Right now, uh, the riot act is being read. That, uh, hey, we want to be out there playing hard, aggressive, tough football, but uh, we're going to play within the rules, and uh, we're going to do what we have to do to win, and if we don't, we'll head back and try and figure out how to win next year. And this is the lesson I think these coaches are teaching these young fellas right now that will apply not only to football, but to life. When you want to be a class person, a guy that has a lot of ethics. And I think uh, Pat Mancuso has taught these players that all year. And probably the one thing that he would hate to see at this point is for them to detract from that. Well, Coach right now having a, a bit of a discussion with the defensive troops. A penalty flag has been thrown with 138 left to go in this one. Coach has had his say. And on the other side of the coin, 
Bill Anarella is uh, just one minute and 38 seconds away from becoming a state champion. Uh-oh, coach is breaking into a smile there, Reggie. The game's yeah. not over, and I think he feels like he's got this one wrapped up. Hey, to win the Ohio State Championship in Division I is a tremendous accomplishment. You bet. <laughs> As I said, you know, you don't see uh, Ohio State and Michigan haven't been right at the top of the football ladder for so long for nothing. They've been recruiting right here in this state. Of course, Michigan gets some players from Michigan, too, but I think they can do a lot of their recruiting down here in Ohio. Well, I know one kid they got from Akron last year, Ricky <laughs> Powers. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, uh, an impact player, I would say. Bobble of the snap, and the fumble recovery goes to Cincinnati Princeton. So with 135 left to go, I'm sure we're going to see... Uh, Lamont Houston come in and load it up a few times. Well, if you talk about Ricky Powers, if we watch this play, I don't think we should mention his name without mentioning, of course, Mr. Hunt, Ohio's Mr. Football, who is Robert Smith. Sure. Freshman tailback sensation at Ohio State. When you talk about these players, uh, Joe Pickens was redshirted this year, the quarterback from St. Ignatius, rated perhaps the first or second best quarterback in the country a year ago. He played in this state title game on two occasions. Yeah, you're right. The first thing Division I coaches in Ohio do is circle the day for the Division I, II, and three state championship games. They make sure they come in for these. Houston tackled from behind at about the 15-yard line. And the clock continues to run with one minute to go. It's a very bright... Houston makes the throw over the middle and a great catch by Olverson. He is off to the races. Now will anybody catch him? Kamara wow. Dean runs him down wow. and then shoves him out of bounds. Can he run or what? And we've also got a flag thrown on Dean. And so with 27 seconds left to go, Cincinnati Princeton may not be done scoring. I mean, James Olverson is supposed to be a breakaway player. And I want to tell you something. Kamara Dean chews him up I mean this isn't even going to be close now that's Dean way back there who's about maybe 10 yards behind Overson now watch now watch number 10 come from nowhere can he run or what look at him chewing him up oh my goodness what a player this is a tough little guy too I mean he's been on, on a, in on a lot of hits Shoved him out of bounds and then kind of helped him a little further along the way, and that's what the flag was thrown for. So this Kamara Dean is 5'8", 167 pounds, and guess what? He also is a junior. No problem. Make him a wide receiver next year. I say off of that effort, I think he might be the fastest player on the field. <laughs> he caught up in a hurry. <laughs> First down and 10 from about the 8, 27 seconds left. Terrific play that time by Olverson, and it's kind of odd that he did it through the air. Nice throw that time by Houston, who caught him right in the seam. Houston looks to throw. Now he is going to run. Got a nose for the end zone, and he crosses and gets in. Great effort that time by Lamont Houston, who scores his second touchdown of the ball game. Superb effort by Houston, who just gave up everything at the goal line once he realized that he wasn't going to be able to run to the corner. Straight drop back. He sees the opening right ahead. Now watch Lamont Houston. He's attempting to run for the cone. Now he sees he can't get it and just hurdles himself, continuing on. Great balance. Another look at it. I'm going to see this effort right through here where he comes back down on his feet. Great balance right there. Touchdown. Had a 19-yard TD run earlier in the first half. And with 19 seconds left to go, I guess you could say that Princeton still has a shot at it. Blaylock is on to try the extra point. Well, obviously, we're going to see an onside kick. And mm -hmm. I think maybe right now I probably would go for two. 
Try it now, and then if you score, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Score, and then you'd have to win. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a lot of ifing. <laughs> Blaylock's kick is up and good. And uh, you have to give the Vikings credit, Reggie. <laughs> They've done anything but throw in the towel as it's now 28 21 with 19 seconds left to go. And all those people that were heading for the exits were saying, oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. I'll turn on the radio. It might be on there. I mean, I thought this would be a 50 something to 14 or 21 score here, but the adjustments made by Cincinnati Princeton at halftime, primarily in their defensive philosophy, have proved to be very, very beneficial. I guess you could say that Harding won the first half, and Princeton basically is ahead in the second half. They don't give you anything for halves. <laughs> it's the whole ball of wax or nothing. Well, the special hands team will be out now for Warren Harding as the Vikings in the form of Mr. Blaylock will tee it up at the 40 and uh, this is an onside kick. It's just a question of who will come up with it. Well this can be very an intimidating experience if you're on that onside kick team because no one knows where they're coming. You probably have a pretty good idea but you know that ball's going to be bouncing around and in a tight situation like this it can be extremely difficult to handle. Didn't go he 10 yards. It. One of the it. Harding players touched it. There's a dive and a mad scramble at the 48-yard line. Think, I think Princeton got the football. Let's see. One of the Harding players stepped up and tried to touch it, oh, and guess wow. what? Harding comes away with it, and you might say that fate has sealed this one for the Raiders of Warren Harding. Princeton had everything they were looking for. First of all, the ball has to go 10 yards, but if the receiving team touches it before it does go 10 yards, it's a free ball. Watch number 86. That's Eric Bender. Eric Bender, who touched that football, made it a live ball, and fortunately for Warren Harding, someone recovered, and the celebration is on as they have won the state championship game. Championship time at the Rubber Bowl. Warren Harding winning 28 to 21 as we pause for this local break. But right down to the final play of the football game, Reggie Rucker. Warren Harding, the Division I state champions, as they held off Cincinnati Princeton 28 21. Now, congratulations to Warren Harding, but what a gallant comeback attempt by Cincinnati Princeton. Well, you and I were looking at each other at halftime saying, boy, is there any way Princeton can get back into this ball game? And then, of course, we think about that Warren Harding offense and we kind of said, well, <laughs> if they do, it's going to be a rough go, but they certainly came back. This sport is like all others. If you play great defense, you can stay in a football game, and I think that's what turned it around for Cincinnati Princeton in the second half, their defense, but, of course, it was a little too little too late. A couple of big plays really the one that really comes to mind was the interception by Kamara Dean. It was 14 to 7 at one stage, and Princeton had taken it down to the 15 yard line and had Houston throwing the ball a little higher. Williams probably would have made the touchdown reception, but instead, mm -hmm. Dean picked it off, and then two plays later, Probit scored from 84 yards, and that was the difference. Basically, uh, they did what they said they would do. They're a big play offensive attack, and of course, uh, Warren Harding made those plays primarily in the person of Omar Profit. Prove it. Prove it. Chris Ensign with a terrific game uh, from the quarterback position. And, of course, Anthony Butler, the tailback for Warren Harding, had a, a very successful day. It was a team effort. I don't think there's any question about that. A lot of weapons for Warren Harding. And, of course, we're waiting now for uh, the officials to gather everybody together and uh, present the runner-up. And, of course, the state championship trophies. Uh, there you see... The trophies are on hand. The Commissioner Claire Mascaro of the Ohio High School Athletic Association is just about ready to make the presentation. We'll go down to the field. Complimented not only for your play today, but for your season and playing in this championship game today. 
you've been involved in the 19 years that we've had these playoffs. You've been here nine times, and six times you've played in this state championship game. And I know how very proud the red and gray are on what you've accomplished. And to assist me to give you this trophy is Bob Denny, the Vice President of our Board of Control. And with it goes, congratulations, state runner-up, Division I, to Cincinnati Princeton High School, a great football team. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to start the award ceremony. My pleasure to introduce Mr. Claire Mascaro, who will present the runner-up award. This time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to introduce Mr. Fred Daffler to present the winning trophy to the Raiders from Warren Harding High School. Ladies and gentlemen, before making this presentation, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Ron Knight, member of the Board of Control from the Northeast District, who has the trophy and will present it here momentarily. Before doing so, Coach, I'd like to congratulate you and your staff and all this fine football team for working together for 16 weeks or so and molding yourself into an outstanding football team. Congratulations, good luck. is uh, an elated Phil Anarella who is uh, making his acceptance speech right now Reggie Rucker after 
capturing the Division I state championship, a game that he probably figured was won at halftime and ended up having to go right down to the final seconds to secure it. You know, football starts way back in July for some in early August and 100 degree temperatures and you set out and you have a goal and when you get to this point and your dreams come true, what a sweet, sweet feeling it is when you walk away the champion. And of course, Coach Anarella realizes there are so many people responsible, all the assistant coaches that never really get the credit. Of course, uh, the student body supporting the ball club, the players themselves, the commitments from the families. And uh, this is what it's all about, climbing to the top of the mountain, uh, looking from the pinnacle down and realizing that for at least this day, this season, that you're the best. We'll pause now for this final local break from the River Bowl won state championship to Warren Harding the Raiders as they defeat Cincinnati Princeton 28 to 21 in front of a big crowd here at the Akron Rubber Bowl our executive producer this afternoon has been Joe Tanzarello this game has been produced by Mr. Steve Warren and of course so ably directed by Tom Farmer